All right. Welcome back to the Food Freedom Summit for Christian Women. I'm really excited about this topic and this guest. This is Christina Paulden. She is a life coach who helps women elevate their lives and achieve their goals. As a wife and mother, she understands the importance of balancing time with God, family, and personal growth. Christina's approach focuses on spiritual warfare to overcome obstacles and create lasting change. She believes that everyone can reach their full potential, and she's dedicated to guiding her clients in their personal and spiritual growth. With Christina's help, women can overcome challenges and live a fulfilling life that aligns with their unique purpose and values. So welcome, Christina. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I appreciate being here. Today, I want to talk to you all about fasting and how it can allow you to break off some of the spiritual boundaries and the spiritual issues that you're ex experiencing, especially dealing with food. So um, a little bit about me. I know she did my bio, but a little bit more about me is spiritual warfare is my jam. Um, I know it's not for everybody, but I know that it is my calling. It is my anointing. And um, fighting in the spirit is something that I am very passionate about, but I'm also passionate about teaching others how to do it as well. Um, know that when you start to fast spiritually, um, you will be then breaking things off of you and also off of your family, off of the future generations. So this is why fasting is um, extremely important. So I want to talk about why fasting is important and how you can do it successfully and some things to make sure you're not doing while you're fast so that the enemy doesn't have the legal grounds as you're fasting. So um, why is fasting important? First, it allows us to deny our flesh. So um, especially when we're talking about like food and eating and things like that, our flesh gets us in trouble. Um, it has us doing things that we don't really like want to do. But when we submit to the father, when we go into a fast, we are denying our flesh. And when we deny our flesh, we're allowing our spirit man to take over. So, you know, spirit man, of course, is connected to God, connected to the Holy Spirit. And oftentimes we are living in our flesh that is allowing us to make these, you know, wrong decisions. But when we deny our flesh, we're able to take a break from those bad decisions that we're making and we're able to feed our spirit man. Um, while you're fasting, you have to also make sure that you are reading your scriptures. That is going to be, that's the key, really, because um, any and everything has to submit to the word of God. And if you are fasting and you are simply just like not eating, trying to get a breakthrough, know that um, it's not going to be super effective because you are not using the scripture as your ammunition. Yeah, the scripture is what the enemy has to submit to. So as you are going into these fasts, you have to go into the scriptures pertaining to whatever it is that you're fasting for. If it's your marriage, what does the father say about your marriage? If it's, Is it your health? What does the father say about your health? Something else that um, is really good with fasting, really important about fasting, is that the Bible tells us that when we fast, the healing process will speed up. So it's really ironic when people say, I'm, I'm too unhealthy to fast, you know, because the Bible tells us if you want to get some sort of healing, but not only that, if you want to get the healing faster, fast. The healing process is sped up when you're fasting. And I think there's a lot of some like studies and things going on right now about the benefits of fasting. Intermittent fasting is really big right now because people are seeing the health benefits of allowing your body to just kind of reset and detox, okay? So um, the reasons why fasting is important, it's a spiritual weapon. Um, it allows us to deny our flesh. I mean, it also allows us to speed up the healing process that we are trying to receive. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about like, what to do like before, during, and after your fasting. Um, <clears throat> we have to understand that when we talk about a spiritual fast, the spiritual fast cannot just be um, us not eating. It can't be just us saying, okay, you know, I need this breakthrough. So I'm just going to, you know, go through the day and, and not eat. I'm still going to, you know, do whatever I want to do. When we declare a spiritual fast, we are declaring war with the enemy. And when we do that, know, know that he is about to show up and fight for his legal grounds, right? Fight for for your for your body. Fight to to stay in in um and dwell within you. So when you declare a spiritual fast and you are not fighting spiritually, it's not going to come out. It's not going to turn out good because the enemy is going to be hitting you um right and left. Like you will see things start to just kind of like get because the 
the enemy is saying, saying, oh, okay, she declared war with me. She's trying to get set free from this one thing, but I know I have legal grounds. And so I can, you know, mess with this part of her marriage or mess with this part of her children or mess with this part of her health because of the legal grounds that I have. So when we are going into a fast, there's some things I want to make sure that we're doing. Before you fast, you want to make sure that you have forgiven. It is extremely important that you are forgiven any and everybody that has hurt you, any resentment that you have. Um, this can be things that you can remember, things that you can't remember. The Father will start to bring back things. This is important because the Bible tells us that if we want the Father to forgive us for our sins, we first have to forgive others for their sins. So we can't go to the Father saying, Father, forgive me for you know the sins I've committed if we have not yet forgiven our brother. And this is a lot of where the enemy is getting his legal grounds as we're going to the father saying, hey, you know, I'm good. You know, I do what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I keep the statutes, the laws and the commandments, but you have not forgiven your husband or you have not forgiven your sister from 10 years ago when she, you know, called you a name or something like that. You still had that resentment in your heart. And until you let go, until you say, I forgive or father, help me to forgive them or father, um, bring back to my remembrance any time or anything that I'm holding in my heart, reveal that to me so that I can repent. So you first want to make sure that you have forgiven whoever, you know, is on your heart to forgive. Then you want to make sure that you're for, that you're repenting. When you're repenting, you are saying, I'm sorry, I messed up and I'm sorry. But you want to go a little bit deeper because the things that you are experiencing, the things that are hard for you, is usually hard for the generations before you. This is what we're talking about, generational curses. And these generational curses, so if you're someone who's dealing with like food issues, it's probably, you know, something in your in your, um, in your your um bloodline. If you're dealing with like overweight issues, something in your bloodline, addictions and all of that, you can see how, hey, it hits all of my other people in my bloodline. This is a generational curse. So when we are repenting to the father, we are not just saying, father, forgive me for my sins, but you're also repenting for the things that your forefathers have done. Because the Bible tells us that as you sin, it's not going to affect you. It's going to it's going to affect you and also the third and fourth generations of them that come after you. So a lot of the things that you're dealing with right now is because of something that your great, great, great grandpa or grandmother or someone did that has given the enemy legal grounds to your bloodline. And it's not until you say, hey, I messed up. I am sorry. You know, forgive me. That's when you break the enemy or break the legal grounds that the enemy has over your life. So it's extremely important that you are forgiven. You come to the father with clean hands and say, hey, I'm sorry, you know, forgive me. Um, I, I forgive them, so forgive me. You repent it. And then when you do that, you have to now have faith because the thing about spiritual warfare and fasting is that it deals with an invisible force. So you can actually see the warring going on. You can feel it sometimes, but you can actually see the angels and stuff fighting on your behalf or the attacks that's coming to you. So you have to make sure that you are moving on faith. Although it seems as though like I'm praying for my marriage and my marriage is getting worse, I went to war for it. Know that, that you have faith that what you did during that fast, the prayers and things that you, the petitions, the things that you sent before the father, they're getting answered. Regardless of what the situation is looking like, regardless of what the enemy is trying to get you to believe, you have faith that the fast that you've done, that the work that you put in during that fast is going to be something that's going to be beneficial, it's going to actually work, be beneficial to you and also the generations to come before you, okay? So that's a little bit before. Now, when we talk about during the fast, because this is where, you know, usually we, do, we just don't eat. We're like, okay, I'm just not going to eat and, you know, pray for this breakthrough. We're at war, okay? We have to make sure that we are doing all that we can um, while we're actually fasting to make sure that we're breaking these things off of us. Generational curses are hard to break. That's why they've been on us for generations because can't nobody break them, right? Um, I feel as though the father is leading us now. Like this generation is a generation to break the generational curses. Um, it's in us to do. We have the knowledge and things that we need to do it. So during the fast, you want to make sure, of course, we're moving on faith. We're moving on faith. But you want to make sure that you are eliminating distractions. Anything that is not required of you, let it go. So of course, you still have to work. You know, you still have to like feed the kids. You still have to cook. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Netflix, get rid of it because it is a distraction. You are at war. And even with like social media and things like that, you will see how if you're on social media, your mood can easily switch. Like you don't know what's what you're about to scroll into and the enemy can easily get you to sin, you know, somehow, some type of way, um, if you are doing other things. So this can be the things that you're watching. This can be things that you're, you know, allowing into the music and things that you're listening to. When you are at war during a fast, you want to make sure you let go of everything that you can 
And you're going to be spending that time with the father. You're actually at war. Okay. So eliminate distractions. You also want to make sure, of course, we're moving on faith because we can't see what's going on. So you have faith that this stuff is actually working. You also want to make sure that um, if you feel as though, like, I should say, we're using scriptures. So that's, I already said that part. So we're using scriptures to make sure that we're, we have the ammunition. But if you are fasting for your marriage or you're fasting for um, your health, you have those scriptures to back it up. And it's not like we are, we're just saying that scripture like one time. This is something that we are meditating on. So what I usually do and what I teach others to do is before you go into a fast, list all of the problem areas in your life. You have your marriage, you have your children, you have your job, you have your business, whatever. And then you say, okay, this is what I'm going through. What does the father say about this? Like what blessings, you know, how has the father given me regarding these, these buckets? So um, for your marriage, you know, the Bible says us that he who finds a wife finds a good thing, right? So you are a good thing as a wife. So you can go before the father and I'm even speaking to the enemy saying, no, I am a wife. Like this is something that the father has created and designed me to, to do, to be. So as you are fasting, you have to make sure that you have your scripture. These are, this is your ammunition. A lot of the times I feel like we are, um, we're worried from an emotional state and we're just using our words. You know, you often hear people say, not today, Satan. Or, you can't have my whatever, Satan. And Satan is like, where does it say that I can't have your marriage? You know, where does it say I can't mess with you today? Because today is a good day for me to come and like mess up some stuff. So you have to actually hit him with the scriptures because that is what he has to submit to. So you go and say, well, I keep his statutes, his laws and his commandments. And it says that you know, people that keep his statutes, laws and commandments, they receive favor. They receive blessings. So these things are mine. So you have to make sure that you're actually spending time warring with these scriptures. OK, um, so I think that's that's the sit for, for now as far as what you're doing during after. So we talk about after the fast, because what has happened is. You went into the fast, you know, fighting, you get some things broken off of you. But the Bible tells us that whenever something is cast out of a man, it goes and it roams around. So this is just one spirit. Say you're dealing with the spirit of um, addiction. You know, you fasted because the Bible tells us also that um, some spirits will not come out unless you fast for them to come out. So sometimes it's like stubborn. You're like, hey, how come I can't do this? How come you need to fast? You need to fast to deny your flesh and get that thing out of you. But then the Bible tells us that when that spirit is cast out of a man, it goes and it roams around trying to find a new host, a new home. And it's too hard to try to get to somebody else. So it's going to go back to the person it's been in, the bloodline it's been in for generations, which is you. But when it comes back and it, it tries to get back in you, it sees that it's being swept clean because you have repented, you have forgiven. It's like, wait a minute, I can't get in. So what that spirit does is it goes out and it gets seven more spirits that are more wickeder than it is. And then it goes, gets them, and then they enter you. So they wait for you to sin, wait for you to slip up. Not just that one spirit, but seven more spirits. So you are now dealing with eight spirits. And this is something that usually frightens people. They're like, well, I'd rather just keep the one spirit of addiction as opposed to like the other spirits that's trying to come in me if I slip up, you know, when I get this thing cast out. But again, that's the trick of the enemy, right? He wants you to like stay, you know, in agreement with these things. So you have to make sure that after you come out of this fast, that you are walking this thing out, okay? Like, don't, if you're not ready to change, if you're not ready to let go of the things that you know that you need to be letting go of, then don't even, like, mess with this stuff. Because the enemy is real, and he will come. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And unless you have your, your, um, your eyes set on the Father, unless you're committed to, like, walking this thing out, then things are going to get harder for you. Because once you start to say, okay, you know, I'm going to be big and bad and get this thing cast out of me, the enemy is going to be like, okay, you go right ahead and get that one spirit cast out. Because I know if, you don't, if you're not serious about this, we're going to get seven more in, right? So that, that allows us to, to, uh, to not play with this, say, okay, let, let me take this seriously. So you have to make sure that after the fast, you are walking this thing out. You have something in place that is going to allow you to, to change your ways. What usually happen is, the things that we are dealing with, again, are generational things. So this is all we know. If you're someone who, who deals with addiction, like you grew up in addiction. If you're someone who deals with like daddy issues, you know, that's probably came from some, some, some um, childhood trauma that you've experienced. If you're someone who has like a nasty attitude, you've had that nasty attitude like for the rest of your, for, for, for your whole life. So as you were saying, I don't want to be this way. You don't know how else to be. 
as these things are getting cast out of you, if you're saying, okay, I want to eat healthy. So you get, you get rid of the unhealthy stuff, but you're like, how do I eat healthy? Like, I, I don't even want the bad stuff, but I have no idea how to be healthy. I have no idea how to make these healthy choices. And this is where it comes for you. This is where the walking out of it comes, <laughs> comes into place. You have to allow the father to renew you, to renew your mind, renew your soul, to make you this new creature. And it's going to be kind of awkward because you're like, you know, I was addicted to alcohol and I don't even want the alcohol anymore. But usually, you know, I have alcohol every time I eat or, or you know, have a meal. And I was like, so what do I, this is awkward feeling of me not doing what my body has done, you know, since it's been here. So you have to make sure that after the fast, you are walking it out. Have something in place that's going to allow you to say, okay, instead of doing this, what I used to do, I'm going to do this instead. Instead of me like cursing people out because I'm angry and I deal with the anger spirit or a bitter, 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 um, bitterness spirit, I'm going to say, okay, whenever I feel as though that's coming, I'm going to go into prayer. Or I'm just going to be quiet. I'm just going to practice just being quiet. Like that's a good thing to do. Like if I deal, if I'm struggling with my mouth, just be quiet. So you have to make sure even before you start this fast, that these are things that you're thinking about actually walking this thing out because you don't, you want to make sure that you have, you have removed the enemy, but you have to keep him out. Okay. So um, this is what I wanted to share with you. Um, Do you have any, any questions or um, any input on that cat? I've just been taking tons of <laughs> notes. <laughs> I love that you mentioned, um, preparing for a fast, not just, okay, I'm going to, I'm just going to not eat for 24 hours or, or however long, um, that it is a process that starts well before we ever actually mm -hmm. hit the fast itself. Because, um, I know myself personally, you know, um, with a history of binge eating disorder, I attempted a fast a few times and I definitely went into it without taking it seriously. Mm -hmm. I definitely went into it without a plan other than I'm just going to not eat for a certain amount of time. And for me as a binge eater, that was really dangerous. And so you and I kind of talked about that mm -hmm. before we hit record, how um, sometimes somebody with a, a history of binging, fasting is a very scary thing because mm -hmm. If you go for a time without eating, that can sometimes be a binge trigger. So I love that part of what you're sharing is that we have to be prepared with a plan for afterwards. We have to be very strategic for during, um, you know, removing distractions, you know, getting rid of everything that's not absolutely essential for everyday life, because that can be a place for the enemy to wiggle his way back in during your fast. Mm -hmm. Um Another thing I just want to mention, I think a lot of, a lot of the modern church doesn't take spiritual warfare very seriously that we, we have one of two approaches. Um, we're either so wrapped up in it that it freaks us out a little bit, <laughs> or we pretend it's not happening. And the Bible's very clear that there is a war. And while Jesus may have already saved my soul and I am sealed by the Holy spirit, mm -hmm. if the enemy can distract me or keep me feeling like I am inadequate and unlovable and unusable by the Lord because of some habit that has got a hold on me, whether mm -hmm. it be binging or sugar or yo-yo dieting or fear over my body, like, because I'm overweight, I have nothing to offer the, the, um, offer for God's glory. If the enemy can make us believe those things, he will shut our mouths and we will keep somebody else's eternity trapped inside our mm. own mouths out of fear. Mm. And there are too many people that need to hear about Jesus. And so that to me is the power of breaking free from binge eating, sugar addiction, yo-yo dieting, all of those things that might have us feeling like we can't be used it's because somebody somewhere is going to be yes. hearing the story of Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to be doing. Hallelujah. I totally, totally agree. Um, yeah. The, the thing that you're struggling with is usually the thing that you need to be out there doing. Like the, there's the impact that you need to be having on others. Um, can I, I hope this is okay, but I want to mention because again, I, I'm real big on spiritual warfare and anytime I can shine a light on the enemy, I'm going to do it because that's how people are going to get set free. But I want you all to think about like the things that you don't want to do the way that you don't want to be. I don't want you to attach that to your identity. 
think of it as its own separate entity. Because when you do that, you can say, this is not me. And when you know that it's not you, you would then take the next step of getting that thing out, of casting that thing out, of whatever that is. And another thing about deliverance, or even with fasting, is that when you get that thing out of you, you're free. <laughs> it's hard to explain if you haven't experienced it. But if you're dealing with, with anything, this can be lust, this can be porn, this can be food or whatever, there's something in you that's making you do it. Like that you have to do it. You have to feed that monster. And once you feed it, it's cool. It's like, okay, you know, we're, we're good until, you know, the next time. But once that thing is cast out of you, that impulse is not there. You, you're free. Now the habit is still there. You are still be used, you know, to the things that you used to do. But the thing is now removed from you to where you have free will. You can say, no, I'm going to eat better and I'm actually going to eat better. Or no, I'm not going to like watch porn and all this stuff. And like you, when you say you're not going to do it, you have that power to say no to it. So a lot of us, is it, we're in bondage to the things that is in us. And we have to start, start separating them and saying, wait, this is not me. And that will prompt you to say, well, if it's not me, how do I get rid of it? Like, how do I remove this thing? Because that's what's going to allow us to really like move forward. Because a lot of us is in bondage. We're in, we're in bondage. And it's not until we actually break those things off of us that we can actually live in freedom. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, I remember when I first realized that I was actually free. And um, instead of a, a, I actually did a sugar fast to break free from my binge eating disorder. And at the time, of course, I, and I've said this before, I didn't know that it was an actual like disorder. I, it was before everybody mm -hmm. carried the internet in their pockets and stuff and people weren't really talking about it. So I didn't realize, I just thought there was something wrong with me. I was the only one who had that problem. Mm -hmm. And another lie the enemy tries to get us to believe, by the way, just reaching out there. <laughs> um, but I remember it had been three and a half years since I had had sugar and I was, um, doing some very physical labor on our, the house that we now own. We were doing some remodeling. Um, it was extremely hot. It was middle of summer and it had been hours since I had eaten. Um, I'd had water, but that was it. And we were working really hard and I was getting really lightheaded and had to stop. And the only thing that we had there at the work site was like some, uh, you know, snack cake stuff and, and everything had at least a little bit of sugar in it. And I was so like, I can't eat that. I can't eat that. I can't eat that. I had this fear. And I just remember this mm. peace coming over me. The Lord was yeah. saying, Oh honey, <laughs> you know, you're free. Oh. You are free your body. And I needed some nourishment. And so, and I was in no condition to drive, to go get something. Oh. And, um, I remember holding that in my hand, like, I was afraid of this thing just 30 seconds ago, but that peace from the father came. And so after, after we left that day, went home and showered, I spent some time in prayer. Like this was a whole new experience for me. This idea of nothing is forbidden. Nothing don't call what I've mm -hmm. made clean or unclean. Right. You know, that, mm -hmm. um, it, it was just a very interesting experience. And I remember praying over that, like, what does eating look like now? And yes. the Lord just led me into a place of eating things that he created as opposed to what man has made. And that, mm. um, he would take care of the rest, you know, just, uh, um, seek ye first the kingdom of God and, and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And that was kind of the, the, um, the message he gave me was seek me and I'll lead you to what's good. And that's what he's done. Hallelujah. That's what he's done. I like and, it. That's and I'm, awesome. I haven't binged in a very long time, but I also love that you said that there's two aspects here. We have the enemy and then we have our habits because mm -hmm. we have over possibly years and years of a certain behavior. It is true that our bodies, when we act or think a certain way, our brain actually creates a legitimate pathway, like a groove in your brain that you follow when you hit a certain circumstance, boom, this is what I do. When I hit a certain mm -hmm. circumstance, boom, this is what I do. And so we have to 
build new highways in our brains when we hit that circumstance. So I love Christina that you said, have a plan, be ready Mm -hmm. because when the enemy is gone, we've got to retrain our brains and our bodies to respond in a new way and a new God honoring way. Right. Yes. Yes. I love it. Thank you for saying that. And I, I I want to say that it takes time. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if you are, regardless of what it is, it can take time for you to figure out what that habit is. You can have to keep getting deliverance. You can keep having to fast. I, I'm constantly fasting. I, I deal with spiritual warfare, so I have to fast because I know like I'm, I'm messing with the enemy. So I have to constantly fast. But this is a process. Like this has been something that's on you for generations and generations and generations. And if you allow the father to just renew, renew your mind, you know, renew your habits, he will provide that to you, but it's not going to come overnight. You know, you may have to fight this for a whole month, you know, until you get that breakthrough, until you get that habit, especially when we're talking about like um, diets and life and lifestyles and things like that to where it's a, a day, something you have to think about every day, multiple times out of the day. I have to create this new habit. It's going to take time. So be gentle with yourself, but accept, accept his his ways, his knowledge, um, his blueprints, allow him to renew your mind and don't get frustrated when you mess up because we all mess up. Just don't go back. Say, nope. You know, I, I'm going to keep this. I'm going to walk it out. I'm going to allow him to just kind of completely renew my mind, my character, my being. Absolutely. And put on that armor of God, you know, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, yes. all of those. Be ready to move with with the shoes of the gospel of peace. And I'm going to stop right yes. here. But I, I have heard it <laughs> okay. said, I don't remember who said it, um, that spiritual warfare and fasting is almost like, um, spiritual maintenance, like an oil change for your car. Yes. Every so often it has to be done. And like you said, because the enemy leaves and he comes back and he finds the house swept clean, like, Ooh, there's yeah. room for more. So we have to continue <laughs> to be aware of where we have been holding on to resentment, where mm-hmm. we're picking that resentment back up. Cause all of those things are ways that the enemy can wiggle his way back in and cause some problems. And so making sure, I mean, there are several ways that we can deceive ourselves and make ourselves a mark for the enemy. And one of those mm-hmm. is unforgiveness. Another one is um, knowing what we're supposed to do and not doing it. Mm-hmm. I think it's James one twenty two maybe that says, um, do not deceive yourself by reading the word, but not doing what it says. Ooh. Right. So we have to obey disobedience is a way that, um, the enemy gets his little claws into us. Yes. Hallelujah. I totally agree. I think Christina and I could talk all day long. We could, <laughs> <laughs> but we are going to honor your time. So Christina, you have a free gift for our listeners today. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is? Yes. Um, I have the fasting and prayer bundle. This is going to allow you to take your prayers and your fasting to a whole nother level. Everything that I mentioned here will be included inside of the bundle, but you're going to get a whole lot more. I mean, you know that I'm really big on spiritual warfare, so you're going to get some spiritual warfare tips as well. But um, I just encourage you all to stay encouraged, um, keep the faith, keep fighting, and know that, that know that you got it. Amazing. Thank you. And I will make sure that the link to that freebie is in the caption of this video and also in the comments so that you can find that and get that. Um, Christina, thank you so very much for sharing. And we'll make sure to put the links to follow Christina on social media um, and her website here as well so that you can learn more about her and um, the tools that she has to offer other Christian women. Christina, thank you again.